You know, we serve a God that, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can come. It's like a buffet. You can come and look and just say, hey, he prepared something good, but I'm leaving. Or you can taste and get all that you want from him. And he always sets a table for you. You know why? Because he just loves you. He just loves you. God loves you. Say, God loves me. God loves me. Now say it like you mean it. Say, God loves me. God loves me. Jesus loves me. This I know. Amen. Anybody remember that? Any church people remember that? Yeah. You ever notice how church people always sing weird songs? You know, I, I, they stick with you though. I remember them. My mom used to wake me up and, um, and, and sing a song that to this day I hate. But because I didn't want to get up. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. And I wanted to punch her in the facey, facey. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah, you're like, why are you so happy this early in the morning? Obviously, I hadn't met with Jesus, but I was eight. So there was that. Love you, mom. Okay, so today, um, I got a, I, I, this is a one-off message. We're going into a series next week. I hope you come back, but I really felt like this was a, um, a, a now word. And, and sometimes, like, the Bible is applicable for all people all time. For, that, that, that's just a given. It doesn't matter what changes or how culture changes. It doesn't matter. God's word is true all the time. It never changes because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he's the same, then his word is the same. So I want you to hear that. But, but I, there are times where he gives you a word that unlocks something for you now right? And I believe that God has a prophetic word, a word that, that, that's for our church that he wants to unlock now for us, for, for our house, but also maybe for you individually. And if you're watching online for you as well, wherever you are. And so the title of this message is come up here. It's an invitation to more. And, and, and I just, everybody, I want you in this room to just say more. God has more for you. He's got more for your life. He's got more purpose, more destiny, more calling for you. He's got more grace for you. I, every time I feel like I figure God out, he just blows my mind again. And I want you to know, he's not just doing that for me. He can do that for you. You might say, well, I've done this, this, or that. It doesn't matter. He loves you. He used murderers. He used prostitutes. He used thieves. He used all kinds of people in scripture. He loves you. He wants to transform you, but he loves you. I tell people this all the time. God loves you so much, he won't allow you to stay where you are. <laughs> right? Are you with me? He, he won't allow me to stay the same. That's how much he loves me. So, so look at your neighbor. Say, you look good in church. Look at your other neighbor. Say, I look good in church. You do. Beautiful people. So first thing, faith. Let's talk about faith. I've said this before here. Uh, a lot of people love wisdom and wisdom's important. Wisdom comes from God, but wisdom deals with the 3D. It deals with the here and now. It deals with, the, with, with what, what's going on in our world, in our life. Faith deals with the supernatural. And, and, and there's three things I want you to know about faith. Number one, it's impossible to please God without faith. Impossible. You can be the most holy person in this room. You can, you can serve God your whole life. You can quote scripture all day long. You can do all of it. But God knows if you've got faith or not. And if you just have a little faith, you can please him. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Doesn't matter how much you worship. You can even be one of them, them people that, that's dancing in the altar, dancing in the back. You can, you can be clapping. You can be singing. You can, you can do it all. You can, you can pray every day. If you don't have faith, you can't please him. And when God is pleased, he releases a grace and a favor in your life like nothing else. And here's the cool thing about God. If you don't have faith, he'll give it to you. He'll give you faith if you ask him. And, and so, but, but the Bible says that he who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who seek him. You will never seek God and not be rewarded. You'll never seek him and not find him. He, he, you might have to wait. You might, have, you might have a time, but you will find him. So, so there's a word of faith. Romans 10, 12 says the word of faith that was preached to you. I'm going to preach a word of faith to you today, and I just want you to get it in your spirit. You might, you might not understand it all here, but I believe the Holy Spirit will put it in your heart, and, and it'll grow. So, so it's impossible to please God without faith. Number two, faith comes by hearing. Everybody say hearing. hearing. Romans 10, 17 says that... that, that um, the word comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you can, get a, you can hear a lot of things. 
You know, you can hear a lot of things. I was just uh, in, in, at our church in Boston, Massachusetts, and um, it's a prevailing culture of, um, that's really anti-God. They're, they're killing it for Jesus. A lot of people came to know Christ in their services, and, um, and, and, and I heard a lot of different things in the culture, and nev- none of them gave me faith. But when I went to the house of God, I heard his word, and it gave me faith. Are you with me? You can hear a lot of different things, but when you come to God's house, you should hear a word that gives you faith. You should hear a word that, that says something. And um, I, wanna, I wanna honor Pastor Amy because she crushed it last week, didn't she? I'm gonna leave more often. Bye bye, boo. You can do it. She crushed it. But faith comes by hearing, and it comes by the word of God. Faith always comes through the ear gate. Isn't it interesting that your flesh will always, we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Remember? So, so God spoke the world into existence before anything, anything was. So, so the power of God comes through the word of God. But that comes through hearing, it doesn't come through sight. We always want to see it. God says, hear it. Isn't it interesting? Your flesh will say, I need to see it. God says through your spirit, I need you to hear it before you ever see it. Are you with me? So, so, so faith comes through the ear gate, and it's not a balanced word. Faith is never balanced. It's always extreme. It's why Jesus walked up to the disciples. He walked up to Matthew, the tax collector, who was killing it. Um, he, 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 he was killing it as a tax collector because he was obviously dishonest. Um, and he was, he was robbing everybody, and uh, business was good. And so... Um, so, so the reality is God came up to him and he, Jesus said, uh, come follow me. Matthew left everything and follow God. That's irrational. That may be irresponsible. And yet, he wrote the gospel. Are you with me? God used a thief to write the gospel. Aren't you happy? If he can use him, he can use us. Any tax collectors in here? God bless you. Pray for you later. Um, that's, that's the reality. Faith isn't a balanced word. It's the supernatural capability to accomplish what God's called you to. Grace is a ches- treasure chest, but faith is the key. Hear me now. Grace is a treasure chest. Grace is us getting what we don't deserve. But faith is the key that unlocks it. It's the key that unlocks it. Number three, it's your priority to proclaim the word of faith. Wisdom will never mature you as a believer. Faith does. If God wanted you to excel in wisdom, then we would be known as wisers. Right? But we're not. He wants you to excel in faith, which is why we're called believers. Are you following? And by the way, if you're here today and you go, I just don't get it. Maybe you're un- you, you've not been to church. Maybe this was all weird for you. I just want to speak to you. God, there's no question too big for God. You can ask him, and if you're not there, what I've found is that faith is a journey. Just keep walking on it, and God will speak to you and reveal himself to you. I can give you a lot of data and facts, but at the end of the day, you, gotta, you have to come to God on your own in your own conclusion. So faith is what you need to walk through open doors. And, and, and I love that we serve a God of open doors doors. God is a God who leans in. He does not lay back, meaning he is proactive and he's always looking. The Bible says that he looks for faith on the earth. He looks for faith and he says, ah, I can use that. I can move in that. I can, I can do something with that. He's looking for faith on the earth. He leans in to say, hey, Why do you think that when Satan appeared to him, he said, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him on the earth. Well, how did God know? Because he's always looking for faith. He's always looking for faith to increase. Come on. He's always looking for faith to grow. He's He's always looking to impart faith. Why? Because faith unlocks the treasure chest of grace. And God loves to give his children good things. He loves to give you good things. So the dictionary defines a door as an opportunity. 
I want to talk to you today about a divine opportunity. The Bible says, I'm going to talk to you about a few people. Um, one is Hezekiah, just briefly. He was a king of Israel, and he lived uh, about uh, 700 years before Christ. And it says, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the Lord, of the house of the Lord, and repaired them. He opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Uh, Israel had turned away from God. They were for, uh, uh, serving false gods. They were about to be overtaken by their enemies because God told them that that's what would happen. And, and Hezekiah is a good king. He says, I'm going to repair the doors of the, of the temple. Nobody was going to church. So he says, I'm going to repair the doors. We're going to start going back to church. Why? Because people need to have access to God. And so in the first year, everybody say first. God cares about first. He cares about uh, putting him first. He cares about uh, your first fruits, your tithe coming to his house first. He cares about the, being first in the priority of your life. He cares about firsts. And so in the first thing, you, uh, you, know, you might have heard all's well that ends well. All's well that begins well. Start your day fully dependent on Him. Pray. Read the Bible. I know it sounds complicated, but it isn't. It's not hard. Talk to God. Read His Word and listen. Don't just talk. <laughs> Communication is about learning to listen. It's about learning to hear. And guess what will happen? You'll master your mornings. That will create a discipline. Priorities. Schedule your priorities. Don't schedule God out of your life. Say, he's my priority, so I'm going to wrap everything else around him. Are you following me? If you do that, you'll have success. What you do first says a lot about how you walk, how you end up. I love this scripture. I've said it often. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Listen, but here's the, here's the tricky part. But God has revealed it to us by the Holy Spirit, by His Spirit. You can know what God has planned if you have the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you. I want to talk to you about a guy by the name of John. John wrote the gospel. John was one of the disciples. John wrote the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, at about 95 AD, so about 60 years after Christ was crucified, after Jesus went to heaven, resurrected, went to heaven. John outlives every other disciple. He literally, if you look at how the disciples were killed for the gospel, it'll, it'll inspire you and make you just heartbroken all at the same time. He, he loses every friend that he has. Jesus asks him to take care of his mother, probably because Jesus' father was dead already. And on the cross, Jesus says, basically, take care of mom. And so John goes to the church in Ephesus, which is run by a guy named Timothy. It's probably a church of about 10,000. It's a big church for that day. It's a big church for this day. And, and, and Mary probably goes to that church. And John was, uh, according to church tradition, was boiled in oil, wouldn't die. The emperor in Rome said, well, if we can't kill him, let's put him on the Isle of Patmos and let's exile him. The Isle of Patmos was an isle in the Aegean Sea, right off the coast of Turkey, and it had a bunch of wild beasts on it. It was desolate. So basically, John was food. For somebody and he's there and he's seen all these things happen he's given his life for the gospel he's an old man he's an old man and he's watched everybody that he loves die or heard of them dying for the gospel and here's what he writes I John your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we don't just get grace, mercy, and love. We get suffering, we get the kingdom, and we get the patient endurance that's in Christ. Who wants seconds? Right? I was on the island of Patmos. 
because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Can I tell you, there will be things that you want to pray your way around. There will be things that you want to get out of and pray your way over. But sometimes when you follow Jesus, you're going to be in a situation because of him. You're going to, he was on the Isle of Patmos because of the word and the testimony of Jesus. There will be times where you have to walk through something because Jesus asks you to because you're following him. Rest assured, he walked through it first and he overcame it. Are you with me? Are you out there? Yes. Say yes, pastor. Yes. Say preach, white boy. <laughs> Come on. Wake up. I want you to hear this. I want you to get this in your spirit. There will be things that you walk through because of him. We're living in a culture where there will be things that we walk through because of him. Do not be discouraged. He overcame the world. In this world, you'll have trouble. He says, on the Lord's day, I love the Lord's day. This is the Lord's day. I get to see all of you. I don't care if it's wet. The ducks are happy. We can be happy. <laughs> Come on. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. What spirit? The spirit of God. I was praying. I was in the spirit of God. And, and, and here's what happens. The Bible says, after this, after what? After John, there are people here who you have been through it. Every aspect of your life has led you to here. After this, everybody say, after this. After this. After this. Come on, one more time. Say, after this. after this. Do you know that God has something for you after this? He's got something for you after this. There's something for you after this battle, after this trial, after this difficulty, after this disappointment, after this victory. There is something after this. He had just written a letter to the churches. Jesus had told John he wrote seven letters to seven churches. Most of them were corrective because they were a hot mess then just like we are today. He says, I looked. This is very important. After this, I looked. You know what I've found so interesting about so many believers is that at a certain point, they stop looking. That they go through something. John's lost every friend. He's lost every other thing for the gospel. He's an old man and he's not... Um, he's not at Sandals Resort. He's, he's not at the assisted living care. He's running for his life from a lion. After this, he was in the spirit. Can I tell you that how you make it in Jesus is by his word and your testimony. That's how you overcome the evil one. And when you go, I'm in the spirit. God, I'm tapped into you. I'm tapped into prayer. I know that you've got something for my day and I can't make it without you. I'm totally dependent on you because I know that I got a lot of flesh in here. I know that I just want to break bad. I know that I just want to do this. I... He was in the spirit. And God began to do something. See, after this, I want to encourage you, keep looking. Keep looking. He says, I looked. God's asking you today to look. To look. To look up. To look up. I love it. He says, I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. Come on. How many of you love open doors? Amen. I hate doors shut in my face. If you've ever done sales, you don't want that mess. You want an open door. You want to, well, maybe, well, yes, come on. Some of you can sell, you know it. You know the ABCs, always be closing, you got it. You know that an open door is, a, is, is an opportunity. You know that an open door I can get into. God loves to give you open doors. Amen. And he'll, he loves you so much that he'll close others to lead you to the right open door. He says, there was an open door standing before me in heaven and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, see, he knew his voice. Why? Because he was in the spirit. 
He knew how to hear the voice of God. Can I just tell you, some people tell me, they're like, I, I pray, I don't hear nothing. That's because you gotta keep praying. It doesn't come right away. I didn't, uh, the, Isaiah, the greatest prophet, one of the greatest prophets in the Bible, the one that had the revelation of Jesus Christ uh, 800 years before he ever came, described him in detail. He said, the Lord trains my ear morning by morning like one being taught. Are you with me? God has to teach us to hear his voice. But he said, I heard the same voice I had heard before saying, come up here and I'll show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit and there before me was standing a throne in heaven with someone sitting on this, sitting on it. I can tell you, open doors make all the difference. There's an open door in Jesus. There's an open door for your life. There's an open door of opportunity. The Bible says all of God's promises, all of God's promises, not some of them, all of God's promises are yes and amen. All of them. For all of you, not one exception to that rule. Not one exception. If you're in Christ, all of his promises are yes and amen. Meaning he's already done them for you. He's already given them to you. They are yours in him. There's a yes and there's an amen. I love it because guess what he said to Abraham? Look up. Count the stars. That's how many descendants you'll have. I don't even have a kid. You're going to have all these. He says, look up, Abraham. As soon as Lot left him, everywhere you put your foot, I will give to you as an inheritance. I know right now that the promised land is occupied by people that hate you and want to kill you. But I'm going to give it all to you. Look up. See, some of us be so worried about how we're going to guard our, our rear flank that we ain't looking up. Abraham was accorded righteousness by faith. God came to him and said, leave, leave, and go to a land that I will show you. How do you go to a land that God will show you? Doesn't he have to show you and then you go? No. By faith, you just go, okay. And you do what God asks you to do. Everywhere he set his foot, he inherited. The nation of Israel, its borders are defined by where he set his foot. Are you with me? I want you to hear that. That, that, that God has a territory for you to take. Hear me. Disappointment can cause you to not look. Discouragement can cause you to not look. I know that you all need encouragement. You know how I know that? Because you're breathing. So I'm going to encourage you to look up. John looked up and there before him was a door standing open. And the, and the voice said, come up here. Can I tell you there are some doors that can't be accessed if you choose to stay at the same level. At the same place at the place of familiarity. Come on, there are some, some of you are here today and this ain't your normal routine. You're like, man, I mean, I, I've been to church like twice in a year this year. I'm killing it. <laughs> you are. You know why? Because it's unfamiliar to you. It's not a part of your rhythm or your routine. You know what's interesting? Sometimes you have to learn how to be a part of the family. Does that make sense? You're already a part of it. You just have to learn how to do it. Go, ah, comfortable. This is my spot. This is my seat. This is where I, this is where I sit. This is where I feel. This is, where I, this, is my, you know, this is my people. Some doors will never be accessed if you stay in the same place. A lot of us ask God to open doors, but we, and, and we get frustrated with him. God, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you moving in this way? It's because you didn't move. You expected to see an open door in the same place. Look up. Seeing a door is different than walking through one. He says, I will show you. Can I tell you, once you accept the invitation to come up, to move, to change, maybe, and listen, moving is different. Sometimes God's gonna convict you about where you're at. It's okay. There are times where I really don't like God. He says something to me that's difficult, that's hard, that challenges me, that makes me go, you know what? I need to raise the standard of my living. I need, to, I need to surrender forgiveness to that jerk. I need to, ooh, that can be a hard one, trust me. Um, come on, somebody, got, somebody heard it. <laughs> somebody got it. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. 
There are real people in church? You real people today? Come on. Am I the only one that needs Jesus? Okay, I was just checking. Um, sometimes there are things that, that God challenges you to. But once you accept that invitation, he shows you something different. Isn't it interesting? He didn't tell John, let me show you something, buddy. He said, come up here and I will show you. Church, God wants to move you to a different place so you can see a different thing. I love Pastor Amy's analogy last week about saved thinking, saved frameworks of thinking. Can I just tell you that God wants to move you to a different place so that you can have a different perspective on a situation, Amen. on an experience, on a person, on a job, on a, on a whatever it is that you do. Doors often open. This is my experience. This is the word in some of the most difficult seasons of your life. I wish that God would open a lot of doors when it was all good. But John is on the Isle of Patmos suffering for God and that's where he writes the greatest revelation of Jesus Christ since Isaiah. That's where he has this encounter where he's literally taken into heaven. It was while he was suffering, not while Jesus was with him. You find that interesting? Some of the doors of your life will open in some of the times of the most difficulty. You know why? Because in difficulty, we have this great opportunity, hear me, to exercise faith. In difficulty, we get to break our soul on God and say, all that I have is yours. And I trust you and I love you and I know you're faithful. You've been faithful even when I'm not. You're there. Doors open in difficult times. John was going through one of the most difficult seasons of his life. They open in difficulty. There was a guy by the name of Elijah. I don't have time to get into all of him. But he went through one of the most difficult times of his life. He had had one of the most amazing victories that anybody had ever seen. God answered by fire on Mount Carmel. He prayed that it would rain. It hadn't rained in three and a half years. It starts to rain. The Spirit of God hits him and he outruns horses all the way back to Jezreel. He outran horses. They wore sandals back then. All, all the sponsorships, he, he had them, you know. <laughs> Birkenstock wanted to sign him. No, I don't know. There's all these deals. He, he does all these amazing things and, and, and nothing changes. Nothing changes. The nation still serves idols. He gets suicidal. If you read the text, he actually gets suicidal. He's like, take me out, God. I'm the only one. He goes to a mountain that God never called him to. And God gives him the answer for his life. God gives him an open door in a time of difficulty. But you have to discern in the difficult moments what's the voice of God and what's your flesh? What's him and what's me? What's him and what's me? He'll give you open doors in seasons of difficulty. He'll give you open doors in seasons of disaster. There was a guy by the name of Daniel. Daniel, the whole nation of Israel had been taken captive into Babylon. Daniel, Daniel outlived four kings and he went through hell to do it. But every time he stood up for God, he got promoted. Every time. Every time he did. Why? Because God loves to open doors in difficulty and he loves to open doors in disaster. He loves to open doors in darkness. When Jesus had been crucified and the disciples are in the upper room, 120, he had risen from the dead. He had revealed himself to them for 50 days. Right? And then he had ascended into heaven. The Holy Spirit's poured out. An open door. The power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told him, wait in Jerusalem to receive the gift my Father is going to send you, the Holy Spirit. In every place, in every season, whether it's dark, disastrous, or difficult, God loves to open doors. So how do you know what doors are? There's he doors and there's me doors. Right? There's doors he opens and there's doors I try to open. How do I know which door is which? I want, I want to help you today. I just want to, want to give you something that maybe you can take home. He doors, well, 
He doors look like him parting the Red Sea. Him conquering Jericho by flattening the walls. Peter in prison, Paul in Macedonia, and Jesus when he came. Medors, they look like the Garden of Eden. They look like Abraham having Ishmael instead of Isaac. Medors are doors that I try to force open through my own will in my own timing. Are you with me? I knew that one wasn't going to land well. He doors are supernatural doors of divine empowerment for your life that bring you good and him glory. Now there's also he and me doors. God looks at certain things. Rahab, she was the prostitute. She made it into the lineage of Christ, by the way. But she was in Jericho. And the spies approached her. And she had an opportunity. God waited to see what she would do. And she hit him. And it saved her whole family. That's a he and me door. That's when God looks to see what's in me. And it's, as it's revealed, he partners his grace with my life. Are you with me? There's doors that you can open by what's in your heart that God blesses. Are you following? So, some questions to ask. Is this door supported by Scripture? I don't care what voice you hear, and I don't care if it's on a TV or if it's in your head. If it doesn't agree with the Word of God, it ain't Him. God's voice never contradicts his verse. So hear that. Okay? Is this a door that glorifies God? Is it about me or is it about him? Is it important? Is this a door that's permissible or beneficial? You know, as you live in Christianity, there'll be some things that you do that are permissible, meaning they're allowable, but they bear no eternal value. And some of that's okay, but I don't know about you. I'd rather store it up in heaven. Beneficial means that it has some eternal value. That that, that God is glorified in it. Is this a door that extends the kingdom of God? Is it a door that I'm walking through that's going to fund the kingdom of God or that's going to invite that person to Christ? Or is it it a door that's going to get my family to church finally? Or whatever it is. Is it a door that that people, the leaders in my life, affirm and is of the Lord? You know, God put put people in your life, pastors and leaders and authority, to help you navigate doors. Use them. Just questions to ask. I can tell you today, as you leave today, there'll be a door. There, there, There are probably, there there are lots and lots of people that come to Hope Point. And I want to thank you for that. We served last year over 500 children under the age of 12. I want you to hear this. There's probably about 450, 500 people that serve here. That's a fraction of who comes here. Fraction. Can I challenge you? You will never be more fulfilled than when you serve. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. When you, there is no retirement in the kingdom of God. God wants you to cruise into heaven. I mean to fly into heaven with the bumper falling off and the wheels rubbed raw on the vehicle. Like just, 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 you're barely on it. Out of gas. Expended it all for him. You can wear out or you can rust out, right? It's up to you. But for all my older folks in the room, you have, you'll never be in a position where you have more to give. More time, more wisdom, more experience. Life has taught you so many things. We need you. Today, say yes. Today, find an area that you go, I'm in it. I'll serve there. You'll go through the journey. That's easy. If you're not a member of the church, we'll walk you through that. But sign up and say, God, I'll give you my gifts. 
there's an open door for you today. There's an open door for this church today. I'm telling you, it's a season of an open door. Prophetically, there's prayers that you have prayed that God will unlock this year. Been years. Could be someone you've been praying for. I've watched God unlock several doors this year that my wife and I have been praying for for a decade or more. It's a season of open doors. If, if you need an open door, just raise your hand and grab it. God's got a season for you. Yeah, come on. Just grab the word. Mix the word with faith. Just grab it. Say, that's for me. It's an open door. Would you, uh, would you go to God with me in prayer? If you're online, you can do this too. We do this weird thing in church and it's okay. We bow our head, kind of look down and we, we close our eyes. And all that does is keeps our focus on God and not on everybody else. Nobody's going to take your wallet, I promise. But if you would close your eyes for a minute, I want our prayer team to come. Everybody that raised their hand in that, that prophetic moment that just said, I, I need I need more of Jesus. I need something. I need, I need anxiety unlocked in my life. I need it, I need it broken. I need uh, addiction broken. I need uh, stress broken. I need depression broken. I need, I need healing in my body. I need I, whatever that need is. I, w- I want you to know that, that, that you have an opportunity. You can come to the table or you can walk away hungry. I would say, I would, I would beg you, come to the table. Our God is so good. Mm. He was more ready to meet with you today than you are with him. There's an open door. Church, say it. Say open door. door. Say it like you mean it. Say open door. God has an open door for your life today. Declare it. Anybody under the sound of my voice, there's one open door that's better than all the rest. It's not the next door. It's the only door. His name is Jesus. The Bible says that no man can come to the Father except through Jesus. That's Jesus is the answer for sin. We all have it. It's a human affliction. It happened from the garden from the beginning when we rebelled against God. It offends the nature of who he is. He's holy. Can't be a part of sin. So he sent his son to pay for sin that we couldn't. If you're in this room today, I'm going to ask you. Maybe you turned away from God. Maybe you've never accepted him. I want to appeal to you as though Christ were standing right in front of you. He's knocking on the door. He says, if anyone opens the door, I'll come in and fellowship with him, eat with him. We serve a God that's interested in a relationship, not a religion. And today... I know that maybe you feel something a little different. That's your creator trying to connect with you. It's Jesus knocking on the door. And if you just open it, you can find abundant and eternal life. You don't have to wonder where you will go when you die. It's a big party in heaven for all those who have accepted Christ. By the way, that's just the truth. So if you're here today and you would like to pray with me, we're going to say a prayer and that starts a relationship with God. It's a prayer of surrender. It's a prayer of sacrifice. It's a prayer of forgiveness, repentance. Today, I'm not going to tell you it's all going to be easy, but I will tell you that he overcame it all for you. Some things you'll walk through, some things you'll walk over, but he'll be with you every step of the way. All of Hope Point is going to pray with you. At the end of this prayer, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand so that you can acknowledge that. God cares about your acknowledgement. It means something to Him. So would you say this prayer with me and then I'll ask you to raise your hand. Say, dear God, forgive me of my sin. I turn to you accepting your grace that you showed when you died on the cross. Paying a price I couldn't. When you rose again, you conquered death and hell. So I could have abundant and eternal life. I receive you, Jesus. I give you my life. I'm all in. 
I make you my Lord and Savior today. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. You said that prayer, you meant it in your heart right now. I want you to raise your hand and celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep them up. Thank you. Come on. Keep them up. Thank you. Got it over there. That's five. Keep them up. Six. Yep, that's you. Got you. Come on. Anybody else? Thank you. Come on. Keep them up. Nice and high. Now here's what I want everybody else to do. Look up and let's celebrate like crazy for them. Come on. 